Good afternoon and welcome to Your Health, Your Future, Your Choice, where exploring wellness from, from within is our primary goal and we want to bring you along for this journey. Today, myself, Jocelyn, and Marie, welcome, Hi. welcome. We are back and we have a two-part series for you today. The first one we're going to talk about is connecting within, hearing yourself being quiet, just stepping away from the madness of the world. We're going to try a few things to see if we can feel and sense our own energy field. You know, don't, get, don't walk away. We're not going to get too <laughs> woo-woo on you. But it's something that we're all endowed with that we've lost touch with. Yes, we are also going to learn on how connecting to the energy field within ourselves, because do remember, we have an electric field within us, will benefit us not only right now, but as we age, as we go forward in life, and even when we pass. So, but before we dive, before we dive into that, Marie wants to recap and see what are some of the messages what are the texts? What is being said back to her? What have people learned? All right. So the first person told me that this has been helping her reinforce how she sees her practitioners. So she was using a chiropractor and in her mind, he wasn't doing what she needed, but she felt like he knew her better than she knew herself. Mm -hmm. And she fired him. <gasps> yep. And she's very happy about it. And she's found a better one. And it's actually being more successful for her. But she just kept hemming and hawing, is she right or is he right? And then finally she just said, you know what? I'm right. It's not working for me. So that was very cool. It's an older woman, mm -hmm. so it's harder for her to question. So, right. Yeah. Well, we do, we do have generations where they don't question anything, right. that there is sort of a blind belief. And then if you introduce a different concept or maybe a little bit different thought pattern, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a panic. Right. So uh, congratulations to her. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the next person, um, she's more my age and she's been watching the show and she's never really taken the time for herself. Mm -hmm. But as we know, when we get closer to our 60s, if you don't, it starts to show. So now she's realizing how important it is and that she's really trying to step herself forward and understanding that, yeah, I do need to maintenance myself. I can't just let life play out or it's going to play out. Interesting. So that one's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, the last one was actually a practitioner. She actually called me out on not supporting integrative practitioners. And I get her reasoning for that. So Inter, what was that word? Inter integrative practitioners. Inter what is that? Practitioners that do both sides. Okay. They work with the Western model of medicine along with the alternative. And I, I mentioned it a little bit in our first show, but I didn't go into it very okay. deeply. I usually say alternative or, or the Western model, gotcha. but she wanted it to be known that there are people that do do both. And I, okay. so I will eventually, next time we, we do shows, I'm gonna do a whole show just on that. What they do, what's the best way to find one? Mm -hmm. What are the red flags when you do find one? Okay. And how it could really help you in the long run. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. They're hard to find, and I that's why so. I don't want to go into it unless I'm actually doing a show on it because of how the system works and how they interpret the information, how, you know, the Western model interprets the information and how it clashes, and it's not as blended as we'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. Are there a few people that can do it? Yes. Is it widespread? No. So, like I said, we'll do a whole show on it eventually. I think that would be a terrific show yeah. to let people see, again, an alternative. Yes. And how does how does that yes. work and what does it look like? Excellent. So make right. sure you stay tuned. Right. All right. So those are the three for this show that we're going to talk about that just, like I said, it's just reminding people because everything out there is about doing a thing, one thing, whether it's weight loss, whether it's exercise, whether it's meditation. But this is kind of bringing people full circle that everything matters. Okay. It's not just the one okay. thing. And I think that's what people are noticing the most. What, that there's no one correct answer, there's not one way, that it's not just yoga, or it's not just weight <laughs> loss, and it's right. not just Reiki, right. and it's not just that, that right. there can be a blend. Right. 
And that can be, well, it is very individual, but it also can be seasonal. Right. It could be based on what's going on stress in your life that you may, you know, you, you basically need to be able to adjust. Right. And slide. Right. And do literally what's working right now. And that's not a bad thing. Right. Because, yeah, I love that. I, I, I actually like that because you're absolutely correct. There is this underlying or pressure that we feel that you have to pick that because that's it. And you can't right. change because if you change, it's a failure well, not or whatever. Only that, when somebody decides to go on a diet, that's all their focus. So mm -hmm. then everything else goes. Ah, they become tunnel vision. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but everything matters all the time. So it's a matter of that's why we're going to get into the energy piece, because when you do balance the energy and you know what you feel like, you know when those things are going off. Mm -hmm. And then you can catch yourself in the throes of the one that's totally throwing you out of balance. You know, my favorite saying is chaos breeds chaos, balance breeds peace, because as soon as you hyper focus on something, something else is going to fall back. Right. And that's where the chaos starts. And nobody knows why it happened. Mm -hmm. And it's just because you weren't present because you were too focused on one. Gotcha. It's a little bit like OCD, it. you know? Yeah. That's me. No. <laughs> yeah. I think we all have a little bit of that. It's okay. So once thing. you learn to start reading your energy field, you start, okay. there's all these things that it will benefit. So can you give an example of I got all kinds reading of an energy field? Well, we're going to do that after I tell you how nice. it's going to okay, benefit. Good. So the things it'll benefit is your nutrition profile. Mm -hmm. So if your energy is balanced, it'll help you choose the right foods that keep you energized and focused. You'll be less likely to choose the other foods because you can feel what happens when you, you're around them. Okay. Yeah. It guides you into selecting the right foods for even your workouts or after your workouts or for your healing. If you don't feel good, it's going to make you go toward the chicken soup versus the potato chips. It's just going to help you make those better choices. It okay. keeps you in tune with your body's needs so your health just happens. It just happens. Gotcha. You don't have to keep working at it because you just walk up to something and you know whether it's right or not, depending on how you feel energetically. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of cool. It, it, it actually kind of makes sense when, you, you know, when you have that little bit of a salt craving that you, you want to listen to that yeah. and say, gosh, yeah, maybe I do need that. So it helps in your daily decisions. Okay. It helps you to be more present. Um, it enhances your awareness of your surroundings. So, you know, people know that sometimes you feel like you shouldn't go one way or you should go the other way to work today. And something's telling you I should take the long way and you don't want to and then there was an accident and then you got backed up anyway. Mm -hmm. Those feelings come all the time, but we don't know if they're right or wrong. The more you balance your energy, you'll know if they're right or wrong. Okay. And that's the cool part. So it develops your intuition a little yeah, better? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it promotes clarity in your perception of others. Mm -hmm. So again, how many people think they, this person's wonderful, and then the next thing you know, they stole their wallet. Y you just feel what's right or what's not in somebody. And you can tell that there's so much more behind what you're seeing right out of the gate. Gotcha. So not accepting things on face value necessarily. Right. There's a feeling. You know, it's, yeah. it's your intuition. It's the energy. When something goes in your energy and it's not right and you know how you feel balanced, you're going to know that energy isn't right. Mm -hmm. Um, there's all kinds of things, hidden opportunities. There's this synchronicity and healing that you'll be able to see those messages and get to where you need to go next. And that's a whole show on synchronicity. I love um, it. Yeah. It allows you to observe and improve your life patterns. So it helps you realize, okay, I stay up too late every night. I get up late every morning. It helps you become more present in, in seeing them and knowing that you're creating the chaos because you feel it start building now versus just living in it. So you can like stop yourself in the tracks. It helps you in your relationships. Again, it'll help you realize your you might be projecting what you think your partner is saying versus actually what your partner means. Because uh -huh. you're going to feel that underlying message. Oh, that's my opinion. That's not really what he's thinking. Let me ask him now. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Or what are you, you know, whomever it is. So, so don't interpret necessarily what somebody's saying. Actually... And well, listen. Because one sentence can be interpreted 50 different ways. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you want to feel what's behind it. You mm -hmm. want to have a good understanding. Helps you break free from your childhood patterns. Again, are you t saying to your kids what you swore you'd never say to? Yeah. Right? You'll, you'll, you'll end up stopping in your tracks because it makes your energy feel just off. Because you, you're living so balanced that that doesn't belong there mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. 
So it catches you in so many different ways. Wow. It's actually pretty cool. It helps you with your job. Again, it provides clarity at work. It Im improves your relationships at work. You know, things like that. I mean, I had a woman one time so mad because they kept piling work on her and piling work on her and piling work on her. And I said, well, where do you think they get the work from? And how much work are they doing? Mm -hmm. And once she sat back and looked at the whole chain of events, she realized it wasn't personal. She kept thinking it was personal. Everybody in the office was getting work piled on them. Correct. So it's those kinds of things that you go home be being beat up every night because you think everybody hates you. Mm -hmm. When all along, it's just the job. Right. There are instances when it's not, but right, yeah. yeah. But for her, but then again, you'd want to be again correctly identify that because which one just will eat you, you alive, and the other one will know you get to change the job if you don't like it. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, nice. there's so many different ways. Um, again, hidden opportunities at work. You would see those. Um, helps you if you're a caregiver. It helps you read the person that you're caring for versus being upset or mm -hmm. feeling like they're taking away your life. All kinds of things. And it even helps you up to the point of when your journey ends and when you're passing. That's the biggest gift connecting inward to your body within is because the more you connect now and you can feel and sense what you feel like and you, you know your own energy and you work with your own energy on a regular basis, when you go to pass, it's your energy leaving. But if it's so foreign to you, you can't feel it. So you keep pulling back. Got gotcha. you. So you're going to just kind of flow. So the more you can get to just let your energy be yours and learn how to feel it and flow with it, you're always going to be okay, whether you're here or gone. Right. You're always prepared. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's foreign. It's definitely foreign thoughts to us. It's a foreign way to, to think us. about yeah. it, but yeah. Because we're not supposed to stay till our body craps out. We're supposed to have a an entry, an exit point where we can leave peacefully. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know what that feels like and we don't know what we feel like, we don't know what that is. Got you. Hmm. Because everything else takes over. Right. And you're in another panic mode. Right. And you're, you can't identify what is really happening. Right. Okay. I see the pattern. Okay. Oh, so, this is going to be good. I know. The first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to show you that we have energy. Okay. Because everybody talks about Reiki and all these other things, and how the energy, they can feel and sense it, and people are like, I can't feel it, I can't feel it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, this is a pendulum. Okay. Okay, they use it for dousing. Do you know what dousing is? I've heard of it, but like I don't think I can explain it. Oh, finding it, some, yeah. yeah, finding okay. water. Yeah. So it catches the energy and spins. You can also use a ring on a string. Oh, okay. And I'm gonna have you put your ring on a string so everybody knows I didn't fake it. Okay. Ring on a string, not soap on a rope. And if it, <laughs> a lot of people can probably remember, like grandma or great grandma, they used to put a needle on a string, and that's how they'd find out if it was a boy or a girl. Oh my gosh, is that what that was? Yeah. I never knew what it yeah, was. Because people have been doing it for thousands of years. They've been dousing and using their own energy. Okay, my ring. Okay. So a chakra is an energy center on a body, mm -hmm. on your body. And there's like seven main ones, but you have. These things called nadas, which are all these energy flows everywhere through your body, through your nervous system. And your hands are a big energy point. Okay. So if you just, if I just hold this over my hand like this, it's going to pick up my energy. I'm not moving it. What it's doing is it's picking up the energy. And see what it's doing? Hmm. It's picking up the flow. Oh, there goes mine. And as you feel that, you'll feel your hand get a little hotter. Oh, in the middle of my palm. Yeah. It's sort of tingly. Right. That's your own energy that you can use for yourself anytime you want. It's not a mystical thing. It's not a psychic thing. It's not Look a... At that. That's a big circle. Everybody has it. <laughs> everybody has it. Everybody can use it. That's why the minute you get hurt, you do this. And you don't know why you do that. Okay. Why do we do that? Because you want to calm it. And that's the first oh. thing you want to do. So you can use your hands to calm your body down at any point. Mm -hmm. It's free energy. So say you hit your hand, you hit your thumb. Yep. And it starts throbbing. So you hold it. So yeah. you have your energy, which is your aura. Mm -hmm. That throbbing will hit against the inside of your aura. Okay. If you take that pain and just scoop it out, it's going to lessen because now you're throwing it you're outside. You're throwing it outside. And it's not hitting of your the energy inside. field, your aura. Exactly. Wow. Our energy is real. It can be manipulated. You can do all kinds of things. It's real. I mean, it's quantum physics. 
And you just have to learn how to feel it and sense it so you can use it to your benefit. And that's what I do with my clients. I can see their field in their body and I can follow the nerve, nervous system patterns and then I can manipulate the actual energy. So your energy body matches your physical body. So if you can manipulate the energy body, you can do the physical body as well. Wow. So, so if there's an injured part to your body, to your client's body, is it, so when you feel it, is it hot? Is it crazy energy in, in one spot? What, is there... It's or do chaotic. you just know? It's chaotic. chaotic, okay. So there might be some balance pieces next to it, but it has to, to it needs to blend back. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I've been doing it for so long, it's second nature to me, so I can follow the lines so many different directions, and I can follow it from the knee to the head. I can follow it anywhere where it might be blocking, but the average person, you just want to start small. So if something hurts, say your shoulder hurts, put a hand on your shoulder and just close your eyes and wait. And then you might feel something on your opposite hip. You might feel it on your knee. You might feel it on your jaw. You might feel it. Then put the other hand there. And if you get the right two spots, you'll all of a sudden get this like a little tingly in your belly. You'll start feeling a little off. And then you'll just start feeling the flow starting to come back. Because anytime we injure ourselves or our patterns skew, we forget what to do. But if you can make that electrical connection, it'll start coming back. And heal itself. All on its own. All on its own. It's all electricity. Interesting. Yeah. So the next thing you can do, because you have the energy in your hands, you can make an energetic ball. So just make, put your hands like this. Okay. And just hold them and think about the energy in your hands coming out of your palms. And then just kind of pull your hands just a little bit. And you're going to start to feel the pressure. And then just start to shape the ball. This is a Qigong thing. This is like thousands of years old. They can make balls and sit on them. They can do all kinds of things. Because it's solid. It's energy. It's a mass. I can actually like it's a ball. feel the shape. Yeah, it's a ball. So the point of this is not to be sci-fi or supernatural. It's to prove to you that you are more. That you are an energy field that you can work with and utilize to your benefit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel magical, and that's not the right word, but I do in a way. Right. But it's just who we For are. myself. It's just who we are. Wow. It's just who we are. Goodness. But we've gotten, like we so talked about away. in Methods and Madness, we've just gotten so programmed that it has to be a certain way. But the body has millions of ways to rectify itself. If you just lay there quiet enough, mm -hmm. you'll be able to figure it out. The key is lie there quietly and listen. Yeah. We, we're so in our minds thinking there's one way to do things and this can't happen. I think for me, the reason why it did happen was because as a kid, my only salvation was exercise. I mm -hmm. came from a tough upbringing, a lot of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, I was not going to be that. So I got into working out pretty heavy. I got into bodybuilding and I got into really focusing inward on the body to create something because I didn't want to be that. Okay. And then when I got injured with my long thoracic nerve damage, I took it to the next level because my body just was not serving me and it just kept collapsing and collapsing. So I would be crazy going there, putting it back and trying to make it do what it was supposed to do endlessly mm -hmm. for a long time. And then all of a sudden it just started to connect that there was so much more that I was too focused here where I needed to do something here first to bring that up. Then I needed to do something there. Mm -hmm. And it just started all to magnify from there. Interesting. So Interesting. It's just that quietness inside that just stops you from going somewhere else. But if you just lay there when something hurts and just start small like that. Mm -hmm. it, well, it's allowing what I'm hearing and, and what I've been learning from you um, is allowing, just for, for my words, these are my words, the flowing of information, the yes. flowing, and the information when I say that is, my, my brain might say to me, yeah, your ear doesn't hurt, go like this, oh, it's my neck. 
so allowing that flow of information right. that because I have people potential. come in all the time that start doing their own body work and they can't seem to rectify it and they're saying why can't I fix it I go what did you try what hurt and they said well my shoulder I go what did you try to fix I go they go my shoulder I go that's why you couldn't fix it because you tried to fix your shoulder mm -hmm. you weren't open to it might just have been laying coming there from and someplace asking else. your body where you need to be and letting it tell you mm -hmm. And it might be just laying there and start stretching and then you're going to feel like you want to stretch this way versus that yep. way. Yep. Not being so focused, I have to fix the shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, I had one guy come in and he had had abdominal surgery and he had part of his colon resected and everything else and he couldn't lift his right arm. And he had been to PT and everything else and nothing was working. And I said to him, I said, did anybody work your belly scars? And he's like, no. And I said, well... Isn't it's that attached. Where you yeah. Yeah. So by the time he left, his arm was up and he was moving it in a bunch of different ways between, you know, going after the other hip and the belly scars and everything else. So he goes back to the PT and the PT said it had nothing to do with the arm lifting. Because the, again, the methods in the madness is you're lifting up here, you're not lifting from down here, but you need to be able to lift your lats and separate your ribs in order to get Correct. your arm up. But we, we have separated it so much. So he literally comes back and says, I just want you to know the PT said you're absolutely wrong. I go, okay, I can live with that. He goes, well, you're going to agree with that? I go, well, what do you think? You were on the table. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah. You've done both. It doesn't matter what I think. It right. doesn't matter what I did. I wanted him to listen to what happened so he can rectify it on his own next time. Gotcha. Versus me being the one. Or, or going back to the PT and, you know, continuing to do, and I'm not saying PT is wrong, but going back in this case and repeating and repeating and repeating and not getting any better and then, but not also questioning. So he at least questioned and, and he gave an opportunity. But again, even by the second and third time, he still kept saying, they're saying it doesn't. And he didn't want to believe that it did. Because it's too hard for him to mm -hmm. think that he has that much capability of helping himself. And that's the sad part for me. Wow. Okay. Because people don't want to know that they can. Right. So even when they experience it, they start doubling down on it's not well, real. It's almost like a, a victim mentality to a point without wanting to be too yeah. hard, hard about it. But it's almost like I can't, I shouldn't. Well, we were but taught it's that there. we're not smart enough. And I'm not saying you shouldn't use medicine. I have never, ever told anybody. No, you anybody, never have, actually. What I can, can you do first? And when it comes to chronic pain, and as we're aging, there's a lot we can do. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. So if you go into my book, I have a whole section. And there's a whole chapter where you can hands-on self-healing, um, things you can do before bed, breathing techniques, mala beads, um, quiet sitting, simple energy clearing, there's solar plexus clearing, that's my favorite one. So if you have anxiety or you're stressed or you're in the car and there's road rage, again, that anxiety starts hitting your aura yep. and bouncing back. Mm -hmm. Your solar plexus is right here, it's like an energy center. Scoop that energy and throw it out, just with your intent. Just pick it up and throw it. And then you start feeling lighter. And yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Just get it away from me. I don't need, it's one thing yeah. to go out, but when it keeps coming back and hitting you and you put it out again and it comes well, back and it hits you. it's because you're not acknowledging that you understand it's there right. and that it needs to get out it of your space. It needs to go away. Yeah. You're keeping it there by festering it. I, I often wondered, um, I had seen a um, Cambodian um, monk and he, a healer, and I, and I had uh, once said, you know, oh, I have this really bad stomachache. I don't know what to do. And I wondered what that was and now that you said that i now understand yeah what he was doing he was removing it from the aura yep wow yep wow oh I qigong is very cool qigong is a um it's a healing art versus tai chi is a martial art mm -hmm. but we've adopted tai chi as the health standard okay qigong is an energy art and the more old school you can find, the better, because they've taken all the energy pieces out of it now and just made it like a Tai Chi. But there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of variations because each family took that and made it their own. Oh. Because it is them. Correct. And it's they have their else. own genetic imprints and they had their own things that they were trying to heal. So there's so many versions of it. 
Wow. Believe it or not, there's a, um, if you have Xfinity mm -hmm. and you go into the free stuff, there's an old, it's got to be from the 70s. It's a video of Qigong. It is one of the most profound ones I've seen. Mm -hmm. It's free on your TV. Okay. Yeah. And they give you each movement. And as you're doing it, know that you're moving energy when you're doing it. And it's going to, you're, you're just going to be blown away of what it feels like. If you just go through the motions without understanding that you're moving energy, you don't get the same feeling mm -hmm. as if understanding that you're moving the energy and then doing it. It's pretty crazy. I love it. So on, on, on your free channels on Xfinity <laughs> freebie or any of yeah, those. Yeah, it's got, when it first starts playing, you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> what am I watching? But power through it and you're going to be very happy. But it's unbelievable because it's original stuff. It's not Americanized, mm -hmm. move through, let's get it done quickly. Let's, yeah. So they just show you each one because there's all these different movements. Pause it and just play with the one. Don't try to do them all. Right. That's the worst thing people do. Even with yoga, what people do is they do, I mean, if you do a traditional yoga practice, like really traditional, you're going to hold a pose anywhere from a minute to, to 45 minutes. You don't do 30 poses in 90 in, minutes. Right. You never feel your energy. You never manipulate it. You never sit with the pose and see where your body's at and really experience what's happening. I love it. So you miss so much of it. So we need to sit, we need to be quiet, we need to listen, and we need to find that energy flow and be comfortable yeah. with it. And my book, The Missing Piece to Health and Aging Gracefully, there's a whole chapter of things that you can practice and try. And Excellent. It's on Amazon. Cool. Yeah. On Amazon. So there you go. We will see you at the next show. And uh, we hope you've learned something today, uh, maybe opened your mind, um, made you uh, happy to just be who you are and sit within yourself and listen. See you next time. Thank you, Miss Marie. Thank you.